I'm working on this gifted and talented course that I must complete before I go back to school and I'm doing the back of my hair. So I was doing these um, while we went to the movie theater. And so I'm reading all this stuff about uh, gifted and talented kids who perform higher than their average students you know, at their age and grade level, they outperform them. But there are other ways to determine someone who's gifted and talented outside of IQ. There are many different ways to assess a, a GT student, advanced student, or so forth. But this right here, it, it's like, this is what I've been saying. And this is documents, so I'm reading documentation written by um, thorough research, people with PhDs. So it just, I was like, see? And I was telling Bobby and I read it to Bobby. She's like, I see what you're saying. So sometimes, y'all know, I, I just, it, things come to mind. I just get it out and that, that's, that's what I do. So I just want you to listen. Just listen. <laughs> Cause people always telling me I'm stupid. I'm this, I'm that, but I've never ever been normal per se. So I don't know. It says the process of exploration and play is like you give a child some Legos or something and you tell them how to build this truck and, you know, give them the instructions. So you've taken away their creativity instead of just giving them the tools. Hey, let's see what you create. So it's like, let them have an opportunity to to explore, to be creative. Stop telling them how to do things. It says that there are times in school and in society when we must conform, which is true. But there are also times when we need to know how to look at things differently from everyone else. If we don't let young children know that having new and different ideas is okay, then what will happen, we'll end up with adults who don't have new and different ideas. That is what science is finding the problem is, as well as their solutions. That's what invention is discovering what needs to be done, as well as devising a way to do it. When you are saying that there's only one way to live, one way to do things, it's this way, you're stifling, this is what the experts are saying, someone's creativity, their ability to do things their way that doesn't necessarily say it's right, doesn't say it's wrong. But if it's not your way, then it's wrong. And that's where stifling creativity in gifted and talented people. Now, I will say my mother never stifled me. She never said anything really about what I did. I was just allowed to be. I was allowed to express myself creatively. And for me, back in the day, it was dancing. It was through dancing. It was through my hair. It was through my clothes. Um, but she never, she never stifled me. She never said I couldn't go out and dance. I just, I just had to. She never said anything about my clothes. She just supported whatever I did. So I've always been a free spirited child. So when people continue to tell me, you shouldn't do that. You can't do that. It's quite bothersome. But no, I'm only talking about it again because as I put my hair up and working on his hair um, and working on his GT course, it just came up. And I was like, see, it's even written and stuff. Stop trying to tell people what they should and shouldn't do, especially if they're not hurting anyone, because it's not what you would do. Don't stifle someone else's creativity because you're scared or it's not what you would do. It says, how adults kill creativity, assisting that children do things the right way, teaching a child to think that there is just one right way to do things, kills the urge to try new things and new ways. Pressuring children to be realistic, to stop imagining. When we label a child's flights of fantasy as silly, we bring the child down to earth with a thud, causing the inventive urge to curl up and die. Making comparisons with other children. Remember, this is about children, but these children then turn to adults whose imaginations have been killed by adults who think that there's only one way to do things. This is subtle pressure 
on a child to conform. Yet the essence of creativity is freedom to conform or not to conform. Discouraging children's curiosity. One of the surest indicators of creativity is curiosity. Try it out. What's wrong with that? I'm not going to get myself, you know, I get it. I get passionate. And then with my passion, then I'm a, a labeled as aggressive. That's just how I get passionate. When I'm a passionate about something, my voice changes. I may talk a little louder. That's just me being passionate. That's not me being aggressive. Okay. Yet, we often brush questions aside because we are too busy for silly questions. Children's questions deserve respect as well as adults. Allow people to be who they are just because you don't want to go outside of the box. Me, I'm always outside the box. Even when a thought comes to me, I'm always looking for a way where it can be different. So my creative brain doesn't allow me to be normal or basic. Never, not even my, even my clothes. I'm like, mm, that's basic. What can I do to make this crazy? And once I, for me, make it look crazy, it may look like insane to y'all. But to me, that's my normal. Living outside of my comfort zone or trying to things, that's my normal. It's written here, but people are still saying things to me which, like I said before, forgive me and just, just bear with me. I'm working on my GT course and it, this, and I was like, Bobby, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly, and I read it to her. She was like, yeah, I see what you're saying. This is in black and white. So it's like, as I'm doing these courses, these educational courses, um, I'm learning. And it's like, I'm making sense to myself that I've never had a normal brain. Never, I've never had it a normal brain. And I have some other things where I could have conformed to my upbringing, but it just wasn't for me. I, it just wasn't, and I'm, I'm working on a video on that. It's, um, I'm cooking, it's cooking in my brain, it's, it's going. But from a young child, I'd never had anyone who was a mentor to me who um, guided me and almost, it did bring me to tears in class and I had to shut it down real quick. And I just wiped my tears. And I was talking to a student about career choices because they had to research their careers that they want to do in the future. And I said, if I had, and it just, it broke me down. I said, if I had someone from a young age who was there to guide me and to, you know, mold me and shape me and, and point me in different directions, like a mentor, I would be a different person. I didn't have to, and it just, ooh, and it just broke me down. And I was like, so the way I'm talking to you, I never had anyone talk to me that way. Not a teacher, nobody. I don't recall anyone inspire me, encouraging me. I never had that, never. So it just, you know, I, I could possibly be a different person. I love the person who I am, love my personality, love that I'm not afraid to try things, but I still think that I would have been a different person or even further in life or somewhere else if I had that guidance. But I guess it wasn't meant for me because that's why I'm here. Can't go back now. I can't turn back time, but I can work on these edges. So now there are questions associated with this. My glasses are wet, sorry. So the questions, it says, um, and this is all tiny, tiny print, y'all. See that? That's all tiny, tiny. So I had to slip my glass on. <laughs> she tiny. So... I just wanted to bring that up. Yes, I do sound like a broken record, but once again, just as a reminder, I was working on minding my business, working on my GT course, Gifted and Talented, mandatory GT course. And I was like, hold up. So I'm finding stuff out about myself. <laughs> All right, guys. Ooh, ch ch mm -mm. All right, let me do a row. No, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to finish this module. Then 
I told myself, I do a module, then I do some editing or some writing, do a little bit of hair and then go back. So it's like once I do some work, I reward myself with editing or doing something that fulfills my creative spirit. So <laughs> I'm going back and forth. <laughs> okay, but I can't do anything else until I finish this module. So it looks like I have two more things. Another one where it says sometimes, always, never. Hopefully, let's click on that. We'll see what that is. Oh, good. Sometimes. Consider the following statements and describe if they are sometimes, always, or never. Okay. And then I'll be finished with this one. All right, y'all. I'm going to call you back later. Okay. We got, see, I'm here. Day five. And it's a 30 hours. I have to do 30 hours of work. So you got. What's up, Basil Bates? <laughs> I am on the last unit of this GT course. So a unit is like a day. So I'm on day five, unit five. Baby, baby, I'm about to eat snack. So I got me my favorite beef patty. And I put some little cheese up in here. Look at that pull, y'all. Look at the pull. <laughs> okay, it was a baby pull. But you know what I learned from this man? Wanna tell you? about being careful about the things you put in your body. He says, stop being lazy. You know how we buy that pre-shredded cheese? I know you do. I know you do. He's like, there's all types of stuff like to keep the cheese separated. He says, stop being lazy and shred your own cheese. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I guess I'm a little lazy eating it. Be fatty that I love. But I did shred my own cheese. You know what? Baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps. You gotta start somewhere. Mm hmm. So I'm trying to be a little more, you know, proactive. All I can do is try. All you can do is try. All right. Let's see what this last one talking about. Your girl. <laughs> she gonna do it. I'm finishing. My goal is to finish it today. Even if I'm up to 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Let me go back to module one. Oh no, this got six modules. I thought it was five. Did y'all see five? Or did you see six? <laughs> That's all right. I can do it. You can do it, Joy. You can do it. You can do it, Joy. You can do it. You can do it. All right, let me go back to module one and learn some. So Bobby's back. What did you do when you first came in, Bobby? Because Miss Miss Thing over here is supposed to be getting her modules done. <laughs> She's supposed to get these modules done. I went on her like white on rice. And when my when we walked in, it looked like she was watching a little movie. <laughs> She's like, eh, 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 it's part of, it's part of it's, it's part of it, I swear. But it looks like she just over here chilling watching a movie, braiding her little hair. But then something popped up that made it look like it was a lesson. I was. Yes, okay. it was part of the okay. training. Okay. <laughs> because if I'm doing it, so we skipping the video. Come on, we skipping the video. Yeah, I, know, she I got don't... the information. We we getting it done. We getting it done. <laughs> and that uh, module with what was in it? The one. What was the um, their names from the case studies? Uh, Mark. Yep. And Mark Sue. was a. He wasn't a non-producer. He was an underachiever. We put that Mark was an underachiever. No, he was a non-producer. No way. Yeah. We got it wrong? I switched it because I had I process things slower than the average person. 
which doesn't mean I'm not bright. I just process things slower. I had to go back and as I was reading to find out, reading a case study to write about the other person, I was like, no, Mark is the non-producer. She is the underachiever. So it was switched or whatever it was, it was switched. So I just changed some of the wording. So I had to go back through the, the PowerPoints and all that stuff. I processed it. Then you're like, come on, Lou, what you reading? No, you fa you're fast, I'm not fast. I should, mm -hmm. no, I ain't going back. I ain't no going back. Mm -hmm. You fast. I like to get things done. I know. Now, we got a new, this is her other uh, roommate and teammate. That's Miss Erica, sweet as a button. She got a new baby. Erica got a new baby. Erica. Look at look at a new baby. You got a show, Pluto. Pluto, come here. He's so cute. Mm -hmm. Isn't so cute? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. And so Pluto is a what mix? A rock waller. A rock waller and a cuckoo. Kahula. Kahula. I've never heard of a Kahula, Kahula. but she, he is so cute. I keep calling her she. So cute. Yes, you cute. Yes, you cute. Look at that little belly. You want to bite everything. You want to bite everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you bite everything? So cute. Oh, uh, he's like, what happened, bro? What happened? No. And he likes our braids. What do you mean? What you got? Oh, you have to go back. Oh, my God. So that's, that's his way he, he sleeps. So you guys got to go back again, Bobby? Yes. We what you, dinner. Oh, so you going back for dinner? Yeah, but... That's not like it's practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done practicing for the day, but... Oh, so you have to do like a team dinner? It's just they get food from Cato that they pick up at 10 a.m. 10 a.m.? Make that make sense. <laughs> yeah, and it just sits there for a while. And then- Is it in the refrigerator? Yeah, the salad's in the fridge. And then, um, yeah, we just go eat. And we eat sitting there to eat and then we'll be back, but- So where do y'all do it? In the locker room. In the locker room? It sits like right outside the locker room, and then we just grab our food and go in the locker room. Oh, it's Ew. not hot food then? No, it is. Like, most of the time it's pasta or chicken. Girl, you need to pack up some seasonings? You know, I got all my seasonings. I travel with my seasonings. Some Tony's. Maybe, I think that's a good idea. We should bring our Tony's. Because we have Tony's and Sapiola, so they're pretty similar. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. one yeah, in the locker room. Dress that sucker up. You need some pepperoncinis and stuff? Bring the pepperoncinis oh, and some hot sauce. Oh, look at, look at yes, this! This is our other roommate, Allie. Oh, no. Look at that. She she's with Stanley. Yes, I wanted the the forty ounce, but this is the last. Is that what she had? Is that she a has the sixty four? Yeah, but which don't fit in no cup holder. Yeah. It's okay, but this is <laughs> the last one left at Target. And I like that color. Yes, I love this color. How much was that, Stanley? It was only 35 Okay. And this one, that's the big dog. Um, it doesn't fit in anybody's cup holder. She has, she's this perfect. one needs its own seat belt and seat. It needs no. a, it needs a. Look. She's perfect. Don't touch on her. That I one's like recommend. one that you don't travel with. That's the one that you stay at yet. Like you bring that to work. Cause that one needs a whole car seat. Yeah, I don't bring it like on games anymore. Bring it to games anymore, just because it's. I don't want to leave her anywhere. That's fine. Girl, don't forget your seasoning. Mm mm. You want to enjoy your food. Mm hmm. Start bringing seasoning. To dress that sucker up, and they put up a tree. I'm gonna bring the. Mm hmm. Y'all always leave this on. It <laughs> always this on all the time. We should have a fireplace. But then I don't think it, it might turn off. Well, there's a background that's a fireplace. Oh, really? Yeah, it's oh, a beautiful we should change it. Mm -hmm. The fireplace is we really cute. We'll change it. Um, All right. We'll be back. All right, well, you guys enjoy your dinner. Where are the seasonings? It's right here. That's all you bring? You only pepper and stuff? Pepperoncinis? Well, there's like pepper, garlic, salt. Mm -hmm. There's a hole in here. Can't go wrong with sloppy mama. Mm -hmm. 
they're cookies, but I think they're not sweet enough. We make them every year. They call them Russian tea cakes or sand dunes. They're popular. They, they didn't make them sweet enough. And we usually have a mixer. Did I give you my mixer, Bobby? Yeah, we didn't have a mixer. So I'm not crazy about them this year. Oh, you did? Alright, girls. See you later.